That is so much fun to have all these credit challenged individuals. When they tore down Banner Ford in Decatur, Georgia, where I started my F&I career, it, it's amazing because I took my son Zachary over to Banner Ford when they tore it down. And they, the wrecking balls, it was a Sunday, and they had been wrecking that thing and running, running over it with tractors and all. And I said, this used to be my F&I office, son. This was the office I worked out of. And I reached up and I tore off a piece of the wallpaper. And I said, look, there's other wallpaper underneath this wallpaper. That was the wallpaper when I was here. I said, see all those signatures on it? And he looked and there were signatures all over the wallpaper from when I was there. Because when they were leaving the office, I used to ask the Bogue, I said, look, before you leave, uh, William, would you mind signing the wall here? And the bogue would sign the wall. I had one stand on a chair and sign the ceiling once. Because I, I told the salesman, I can make a bogue sign anything. <laughs> I had them sign the ceiling. I had them sign the walls, you know. I had them do push-ups to qualify for credit insurance. <laughs> I invented the Federal Express clothes. Now, have you ever used the Federal Express clothes, Scott? You haven't. <coughs> well, in the 80s, when the Federal Express overnight envelope first came out, the cardboard envelope we use today, I had an idea. So the customer, generally distressed credit customer, come in the F&I office, what's my interest rate? What's my payments? What? Let me see if they've sent your contract. Huh, here it is right here. Got your name on the outside of the envelope. What's my payment? I don't know. I haven't opened it yet. <coughs> <laughs> hey, you got a service contract. <laughs> I never had one argue with documents that came out of a sealed Federal Express envelope. <laughs> might not be legal today, though. Well, I didn't say it would be legal today. Just <laughs> it was just fun then. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> it's not nearly as much fun as it used to be. <laughs> you know, I've got some word tracks coming up. There's still remnants of this that you'll like. But anyway, gap, gap protection is probably the easiest thing to sell. What about window etch? Anybody sell window etch? Window etch has been the most prosecuted product that we sell. Of all the products that we sell in F&I, Window Etch has had the highest percentage of, of prosecutions, and not because it's a bad product, but because people have overcharged for it to the extent that they've done predatory pricing. It's a pretty good product, but still in all, uh, recently um, Paragon Honda in uh, Manhattan, biggest Honda dealership in the world, Paid back millions of dollars. We're talking about Brian's dealership, Sean. Paid back millions of dollars for doing business with credit repair. Credit, forget it. But you know, the millions of dollars they were fined by the New York State AG was not because the product was a bad product. The product was okay. It was for predatory pricing. I mean, they were, it was a deceptive trade practice fine. You ever follow what I'm saying? The product was not bad. The product pretty well performed the way it was supposed to perform and did what it was supposed to do, but it, it wasn't a $2,500 product. You know, they, <laughs> they were paying like $150 for it. You know, something, like, something low like that. So anyway, when I get into the legal part of this thing today, I'm going to talk to you about the things that we have to avoid, things we have to watch for. Uh, what about the environmental protection package? Now, I imagine in Buffalo, you're probably selling a lot of chemical packages. What are you selling? Rust-proof undercoat. Rust-proof undercoat. You're selling the environmental protection package, Buffalo Blend, right? <laughs> the environmental protection package. Mr. Customer, we live in Buffalo, New York, where we put more than three tons of road salt per lane, per mile, per, per highway, per year on our roads. 
we put more than three tons of chemicals per lane, per mile, per year on our highways here in Buffalo. That's true. That's a true stat. You know, we've got things that attack your car's finish. Mr. Customer, the paint in today's cars is inferior to the paint in cars 25 years ago. 25 years ago, paint was superior to what we now have because the, fed, the, the federal agencies took the lead out of paint. Environmental Protection Agency outlawed lead paint in automobiles. And lead was what held the pigment. I mean, today, oxidation is the number one thing that attacks your car's finish, especially red paint and black paint. So we've got an ultraviolet ray filter in our, our clear coat today. What, what brand are you putting on the cars? Uh, we're doing Z-Bart. Z-Bart. Ultraviolet ray filter, probably a Teflon base. Okay, you got bird droppings, you've got tree sap, you've got bugs, you've got pollen, you've got, well, you don't have salt air, but you have salt on the roads. I mean, you've got industrial pollution, you are in the Rust Belt. You, you know, I don't know if you've ever been, been to Buffalo, but I go to Buffalo, I go to Rochester, I go to Syracuse, and the only thing holding those cars together is the paint. <laughs> I mean, you know, serious, serious environmental things attacking your car. If I'm in Buffalo, I'm in Syracuse, I'm in Rochester, I can sell a lot of environmental protection. You know, three tons of salt per lane, per road mile, per year on our highways. Sir, you've got things attacking your car underneath. You've got, you got things coming down on your cars. I mean, you, industrial pollution coming out of the air. You've got bird droppings, tree sap. You Florida guys, you still have love bugs? You know, love bugs fly, fly, fly together in mating season, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, the Pentecostals out there tearing them apart. <laughs> <laughs> They'll eat right through the paint. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Pentecostals out there tearing them apart. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> love bugs. <laughs> I love that joke. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, environmental protection, tire and wheel. I am a strong believer in tire and wheel protection, Mr. Customer. I've had nine Escalades, seven Corvettes. Uh, I can't tell you how many cars I've had. Every one of my Escalades had the big, wide Toyo tires. First thing I did when I got a new Escalade was go over to Kaufman Tire I want 23-inch wheels. I want Toyo tires on this car. I want the gold package. All I need is a wrap group and a posse. <laughs> <laughs> I had my Escalade tricked out. I, I was never so proud. I was in Mississippi driving to the NADA convention in New Orleans. Got profile stopped. <laughs> Cop didn't expect me to get out of that car. <laughs> Different days. <laughs> well, that's a I ten's that drug corridor. I'm coming up I ten with it with that blacked out Escalade tag that says demand. <laughs> My car still says demand. I have I've had that tag for ten years. <laughs> demand. <laughs> well, anyway. Every one of those cars, my neighborhood was still under development. We got 500 homes in my neighborhood. They're all pretty big houses. Roofing knives, nails, all sorts of screws. I mean, I, was, I had a lot of tires replaced with tire and wheel protection, especially with those ice metal 23 wheels. Ice metal 23s are like $10,000 wheels, you know. And I, I had one set of ice metals that I had two wheels that were were messed up on because I, I curbed them. They paid it. I believe, believe wholeheartedly in tire and wheel protection. But now what did I just do? I related a personal story. Remember I talked about the visual emotional sale? I made it personal. Hey, I've used this protection and I really have. I mean, I remember now before I had good stories, I, I might have embellished a story back when I, I was selling credit life. 
I remember I was at the Pontiac store one time and I told a customer, see those gouge marks out the window there in the asphalt? Those are stretcher marks from a customer that bought Credit Life and died on the parking lot. <laughs> 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 Can't do that today. <laughs> different, different days. <laughs> you know, fun stuff. But all in all, selling products in F and I is is easy enough to do. There's no real problem doing that. But you got to have all the objection overcomers and grammatically program where you can just say them. Let's get on page 68 for a minute. The personal evidence manual. Now I think I probably told you that that I was a disc jockey. Did I not tell you that? Okay, I was with a radio station called WAPE in Jacksonville. Back in the day, I was, I was as famous as a DJ as I am in the car business. I was a radio advertising salesman. But did I tell you I was a stage hypnotist? I didn't mention that to you. I did, did tell you I was an Eagle Scout, right? Did I tell you I was a journeyman sheet metal mechanic? Aircraft? Did I tell you I was a journeyman welder? Did I tell you I was in the Ultimate Fighting Championship first year they held it? Did I tell you I got my ass kicked and I lost? Are you serious? You know, you've seen, the, you've seen the photographs. When does all that start to sound like bullshit? When, do, when does what you've done in your life, the consumer looks at you and goes, yeah, sure you did? When you don't have evidence. When you don't have evidence when you can't prove it. Well, I got to tell you guys, I had photograph albums in my desk 100% of the time that I was doing F&I. &I. I told you I was state pole vault champion. When I, was in, when I was in Florida, when I was at Forest High School in Jacksonville, Florida, I was such a bad pole vaulter I was not allowed on the bus for an out-of-state track, out-of-town track meet. I was so bad, I was pole vaulting 10-5, 10 and a half feet. They had three guys doing 13 feet. They got to go out of town for the out-of-town track meets. I, I was so bad, I was not allowed. But my dad was in the U.S. Navy. And my senior year, we got transferred to Meridian, Mississippi. And the coach comes up to me at the new high school. He says, you play football? Yes, sir. You any good? Suck. <laughs> How about track? You run track? Pole vault. You any good? No, sir. Terrible pole vaulter. <laughs> How high do you vault, son? 10-6. 10-6 state record's nine feet. <laughs> 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 From zero to hero. <laughs> 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 yeah. I still got that newspaper clipping. I, I clipped off the part where it said how high. <laughs> but I do still have that. You see, you've got to have that evidence. It's got to be predominant. 